Hello, it's Mr. Mabry, and we're going to take some notes today called Meet the Pathogens. Why don't you flip to a new page in your science notebook and title it Meet the Pathogens. Go ahead and write down these three vocabulary words, and then set up the rest of the page to be a grid that we're going to fill out throughout the remainder of our notes. First column, pathogen, prokaryote versus eukaryote, reproduction, location, harmful, treat, prevent, and examples. Pause the video and resume it when you're ready to go. Ah, look at this guy. He wants to eat you. Nom, 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 nom. This is what pathogens are, you guys. They are bad guys out there trying to make you sick. So our opening definition is a disease-causing agent. That is a pathogen. Now, there are other kinds of pathogens that are still disease-causing, but they might be slightly nicer. We call those opportunistic pathogens. And they seize the opportunity to invade when your immune system is weak. So these aren't guys that make you sick all the time, just when your body's been stressed out. Maybe you've been staying up too late, maybe you've been sick with something else, and you find yourself coming down with a new illness. That's because of an opportunistic pathogen. And finally, we're going to talk about some vectors. Vectors are animals that often carry pathogens to you. Like, for instance, you may have heard rats have carried the bubonic plague, mosquitoes carry malaria. There's a lot of little critters out there that help these pathogens do their job. So let's go ahead and meet one of them. Ta-da! Bacteria. This slide's going to help us fill out the whole first row for bacteria except for the examples. So bacteria, we're going to write down they are P for prokaryote. You can abbreviate asexual for how they reproduce. As you guys know, they tend to live everywhere. And because they live everywhere, sometimes it's good that we have bacteria and sometimes it's bad. Like for instance, it's good to have bacteria in our intestine. It helps us digest food. And it, though it's good that we have bacteria in our feces because it helps other parts in our body, it is not good if that bacteria gets back inside of us. And in the same way, our skin has both good and bad bacteria. The good bacteria just do their thing and chill out on your skin, and they sort of keep the bad bacteria from moving into the neighborhood. But sometimes bad bacteria does move in, and you're going to see what your skin looks like when you do get some bad bacteria to move in. What bacteria do to harm us is they can eat us, and they can release poison. That's known as toxins. So what we do when that happens is we can either take antibiotics, Anti meaning against, bio meaning life, so it's against bacteria, which is alive and helps us kill them. Um, and the ways that we can prevent it is you can be really careful that every time you go to the bathroom, you really, really wash your hands because if you had any of that bad fecal bacteria on you, you do not want to re-ingest it because it gets in parts of your body that it's not supposed to be in and then it just goes to town eating you. Um, or you need to be careful on the kind of food that you eat because sometimes uh, food can be contaminated with bad bacteria and that's how you get sick. What we're going to do now in the next couple slides is look at some examples of some specific bacterial infections and then the last slide we'll use to summarize and fill out that last little box in our row. Here we go. Here's an overview of all the different bacterial infections you probably have had before. We've got meningitis, which I hope you haven't had, but that is ear infection bacteria, otitis media. Pneumonia comes from these different bacteria. These are different types of skin infection. Hope you've never had an STD, but these are the names of the ones that are bacterial in origin. UTIs, um, food poisoning, these are your main offenders. Respiratory um, tract infections, and then eye infections you can get from bacteria. So here are some common ones. Some of the best stories, though, I like to tell start with Vibrio cholera. Intense diarrhea is what these little critters cause inside of you. It comes from eating contaminated food and water, and generally not in the United States because we have pretty good um, sewage systems, but in other parts of the world where people might go to the bathroom and then downstream people drink from the same river that somebody upstream went to the bathroom in, they get Vibrio cholera inside them. And it just makes people who get sick have this intense diarrhea that's so intense you have to put buckets underneath people where they're being treated and it just gets liters of water dumped into them and so people actually can die from dehydration and so what they do to treat them is they um, rehydrate them through IV fluids and just sort of wait for the cholera to work out of their system. In 2005 I found this 
a map that shows that mainly it's in Asia and Africa, not so much in the United States, which is why you don't hear about it so much, but this is a nasty bacterial infection you do not want to have. One that's slightly more common, though, is tuberculosis. In fact, this year, in 2014, I think, not 15, but in 14, there were some stories about some students in the Kansas City, I want to say south, somewhere maybe Shawnee Mission, who discovered have some tuberculosis in their lungs. And the reason why um, most people don't know if they have tuberculosis or not is because it can be dormant for years. Um, coughing is what spreads it. But if you have a lot of weight loss um, and you don't know why, this could be a possible cause. And just like other bacterial infections, antibiotics tend to take care of it. But in other parts of the world, it can really um, be harmful if you don't have access to good medicine. E. coli is an even more familiar bacterial infection, especially E. coli 0157. This bacterial strain causes food poisoning and diarrhea. You may have had some. There's been all sorts of stories in the news almost every year of different types of beef products or vegetables. This one in particular I remember from 2007. People got sick from E. coli 0157 and they had to recall all this food. So ooh, watch out where you get your food. All right, let's talk staph. This is a skin infection um, that releases an exotoxin, especially on people with weakened immune system. In fact, I had a staph infection once. I had MRSA, methicillin-resistant staph aureus, and so I had to take a really tough antibiotic to get it off. It was right there on my lip, and it was super gross, so gross. I'm not going to show you a picture of it of me, but I'll show you a picture of this guy who had some crusty lesions caused by MRSA. So I hope you never get that staph infection. Why don't we summarize, whoops, let's summarize those examples I just talked about in that last row on your bacteria notes. For Vibrio cholera, let's remember that that was the diarrhea um, dis disease. Tuberculosis caused the coughing, E. coli, the food poisoning, and staph aureus, that nasty skin. Good work, you're done with your bacterial infections. Now let's go to part two of the notes and let's learn about fungi.